If you want to learn how to make food videos, then this might be a perfect video for you as I'm going to show my kitchen setup and also the equipment that I use and how I configure my equipment so that I produce these type of shots that look cinematic and really appeasing to the eyes. Oh, and did I mention that I'm also going to be sharing my tips and tricks on how to hold the camera so that no one has to buy expensive gimbals. I'm going to also go ahead and timestamp this video. First, I'm going to talk about iPhone, how I set it up, what the settings that I use. And then I'm going to talk about the Sony camera that I use, how I set that up, what lenses I use, what settings I use. So do check out my timestamps. But before we begin, consider subscribing to my channel as it's free for you, doesn't cost you anything, but it really adds value to my channel. So to get started, here's my kitchen. It's fully set up and ready to go. By the way, do remember to check out my other video where I showcased how I set up this kitchen how I got it to look like this. So highly recommend that you check that video out after you watch this one. I'm gonna showcase all the equipment that I use. So here's my camera, my lenses, and my iPhone that I use for recording the videos. Besides the cameras, I use the Godox light along with the 48 inch Glow Easy softbox. This is the main source of light for all my videos. So far, I have no complaints on it. The best part is I can control the amount of light that I need all the way from 10% to 100%. And doing this really helps me control my shots. As you can see, here's the light turned to 10% and then full up to 60%. If you don't have a key light, then you can always use the sunlight. Just shoot during midday when the sun is out and bright, and then you could use that sunlight to light up your videos. But anyways, enough talk about the lights. If you do want more information, check out my previous video that I mentioned. I go in full detail on which lights to get and whatnot. For the purposes of this video, I'm going to be using this food platter to demonstrate all the tips and tricks that I'm going to showcase today. For this video, let's continue on with the camera setup. The first camera by default should be our trusty smartphone. These days, everybody has a smartphone, right? So why not just use that as the main camera when you're starting out your channel? In my case, I use an iPhone 12 Pro Max for recording most of my top shots. I use this overhead camera setup mount to hook up my iPhone and then take overhead shots. This is similar to the Tasty Style videos. Once it's all set up, here's what the videos would look like. This was recorded at 4K at 60 FPS. If you want to pick this up for yourself, I'll go ahead and link it down below in the description. Also, it's really helpful and beneficial to have a tripod stand. A tripod really helps you take steady shots and it's really useful when you're recording a video. So when using an iPhone, the very first thing I do is I put it on the tripod, set it on the side so that I can set an angle to record, and then I'm ready to take the shots or record the video. As for setting up the iPhone itself, you need to go into settings, then scroll down until you find camera. In camera, you want to make sure that your format is high efficiency. Next, you want to make sure that your record video is at its highest setting. Since I have an iPhone 12 Pro Max, I'm going to leave it at 4K at 60 FPS. Next, go back and go to slow-mo settings. For this, you want to make sure you also have it at the highest. I have 240 FPS at 1080p. I wish I had 4K, but oh well. Next, that's pretty much it. Also, you want to turn on the grid as this helps you align your camera more properly as you have grid lines and enable smart HDR if you have that option also. Next, we're going to go back and go into photos, scroll all the way down, and then when option shows for transfer to Mac or PC, you want to select keep originals as doing this will allow you to transfer your files much quickly from your phone to PC. Next thing you want to do is hold your screen until you start seeing AEAF lock. This step allows you to lock in your focus and your exposure so that when you're taking the shot, you don't lose your focus or the exposure. With all the settings applied, I recorded this in slow motion. And here's what that looks like. And here's the same shot with some color grading applied to it. Do let me know which one looks better to you. On the left is the iPhone and on the right is also the iPhone with some color grading applied to it. Next, I want to discuss how to make your shots look more premium and cinematic. Mainly, there are three shots that I use. Honestly, I'm not a photography major, so I don't know what these are actually called. But the first one is a low shot. Second one is the 45 degree angle shot. And the third one is putting the food on a rotator and letting it spin. And these are the only shots that I use for doing my intros. So I'm going to break down how I take my shots. Here's the low angle shot. Basically, you're going to position your camera at food level and then turn from left to right. And then again from right to left. Just make sure that your hands are steady when you're doing the shot. And when recording, you only want to turn your body, not your hands. So hold the phone steady and then turn your entire body from left to right and right to left. If you followed all the steps correctly, then your shot should look something like this. This low angle shot is effective for making food look more appetizing, more appealing. It helps put more emphasis on the food. 
Moving on, the next shot I would like to show is the 45 degree angle shot. For this one, if you're trying to take a photo, you could use your tripod, put the camera at a 45 degree angle, and then snap some photos. And here's how the photo looks like when it's taken from an iPhone 10. And here's the same photo color graded. Even if you have like an old camera, you can always edit your videos or photos and improve the quality. For recording the shot, you want to hold your camera like this at a 45 degree angle. For recording this shot, you could do it two ways. You could go from top to bottom or bottom to top. And when you do, here's what the shot would look like. This photo is also color graded as well. Also, I recorded this at 240 frames per second at 1080p. So on your phone, use that slow-mo button. Also, look at how I am turning my body, not my hands. In order to capture a steady shot, that's what you need to do. Tilt the body, yet keep your hands steady. In this step, I'm taking a side-to-side -side shot at a 45 degree angle. And here's what the results look like. Notice when you compare it with the low angle shot, this shot is a lot higher. Let me know which one do you prefer the most. I tend to use this quite often in pretty much all my videos. Moving on to the third camera setup, which involves using a rotation device so that your food spins and appears to be cinematic. For this, I'm going to use a rotator that I picked up from Amazon. I'll go ahead and link it below in the description so you can pick it up yourself. But so far, it has worked great for me. I got it back in May and now it's December. And during these months, I've dropped it a few times and it's still works just fine. So this is pretty durable. Basically what I use it for is spinning or rotating food while I'm taking photos and recording videos. So to set it up is pretty easy. All you do is plug it into power and turn it on. Next you would either place your plate or platter on the rotator and then that's pretty much it. Once it's on it's going to keep rotating in one direction. I usually apply the 45 degree camera angle to take all the cinematic shots that I use in my intros. And here's what that shot looks like up close. And here's the same shot using an iPhone 12 Pro Max. The flickering that you see is due to LEDs. Since I'm shooting at a high frame rate, which is 240 frames per second, it's capturing the flicker from the LED bulbs. So always remember to turn off any external bulbs when you're recording your videos. But here's a better shot using a Sony camera that I recorded later on. And here's the same shot, but just color graded. And here's another example from one of my food videos, which was for making waffles. I think using a food rotator helps produce a much higher quality video. So I highly recommend that you try it out. Well, those are all the tips and tricks for setting up your phone and using your phone for making food videos. Do let me know if you have any questions, put them in the comments below and I'll try my best to answer them. Next, I want to focus on setting up a digital camera. I currently use a Sony a6400 and later on I might do a video on how I set up that camera, what lenses I use and all those details. But for now, I want to keep it very high level and just focus on key areas. In this video, I'm going to show the following. I'm going to discuss the ISO, the aperture, the shutter speed. We're going to start with setting up the ISO. The ISO is your camera's sensor. The higher the ISO, your sensor is going to be more sensitive to the light. Generally, you want to keep your ISO as low as possible because at high ISO, the footage or light will be grainy. And just to show you guys, here's the first photo at ISO 100. And here's the same photo at ISO 6400. And then finally at 8000. Can you see the difference? Here's a side by side comparison. On the left is ISO 100 and on the right is ISO 8000. So remember, lower number is better. But obviously in most cases, you won't be able to shoot indoors at ISO 100, especially if you don't have a key light like I do. So remember to adjust your ISO accordingly. When you're outdoors, you can easily use ISO 100. But when you're indoors and you don't have a key light like I do, then you want to be around ISO 300 to 500, that kind of range. Again, each camera is different. I'm speaking basically from using the Sony a6400. Next thing you want to make sure is setting up the aperture correctly. What aperture basically does is it, it allows more light into your camera. And this is measured in f-stop, like f1.4 or f2.8. Now setting up the aperture will depend on the type of lens you currently have. I have some lenses that go down to 1.4. Generally if you got your kit lens, it will be around aperture 3.5 at best. The reason we control aperture is because of depth of field. The lower the number, then less depth of field. The higher the number, the more depth of field. Here's picture A with f1.4 meaning aperture wide open. And here's picture B with f7.1 meaning aperture slightly closed. Again, on the left is f1.4 and on the right is f7.1. As you can see, the depth of field is missing on the left. Just look at the wood. On the left, you're missing the texture as compared to the right. 
Generally, when I record, I keep my f-stop lowest at 1.4, and I achieve this using the Sigma 30mm f1.4 lens. I have a Sony system, but I believe Sigma also makes it for Canon, so I'll link both of them down below, so do check that out. But generally, a lower f-stop like 1.4 makes your photos and videos more cinematic and higher quality. Moving on to the shutter speed, when I record videos, I basically make sure my shutter speed is double the frame rate. If I'm recording at 24 frames per second, the double of that would be 48. On my Sony camera, my shutter speed shows as 50, so that will be my closest match. When I'm recording slow motion, my frame rate is around 120 frames per second at 1080p, so I bump up the shutter speed to 250. I don't mess too much with the shutter speed, I just follow the simple rule of double the frame rate, so that's all I do on the shutter side. But if my shot is dark, then I do reduce the shutter speed. Or if the shot is bright, then I increase the shutter speed. As an example, here's a shot recorded at 120 frames per second and the shutter speed at 250. As you can see, it's a little bright. And here's the same shot taken again, but then I increased the shutter speed as it was too bright to 320 and it looks a lot better now. So to recap, when I'm recording, the very first thing I changed is the ISO. I try to keep it as low as possible. Next, I changed the aperture or f-stop which I also keep low for that higher quality look. And then I change the shutter speed, basically keep it double the frame rate, plus minus one or two places for brightness adjustment. Once it's set up, if my image is dark or too bright, I would change the following in the following steps. First, I would change the shutter speed. If the image is dark, I would reduce the shutter speed. If the image is bright, I would increase the shutter speed. Next, I would change the aperture. Lower number allows more light and higher number allows less light. The lower number helps create that blurry effect as well. And then finally, I would change the ISO. Remember to keep the ISO as lowest as possible so that your image quality is nicer. Basically, this means that change your aperture and shutter speed, but then keep your ISO low or as low as you can take it. As for the camera angles, they'll remain the same. We'll use the low angle, the 45 degree angle, and then finally use it on the rotator. In case you have skipped over, remember to click on the timeline and go back and review those camera angles that I discussed earlier in this video. So these are all the tips and tricks that I apply for making my food videos. I hope you find it useful and apply it to your videos as well. Remember, you don't need fancy equipment. You just need to be clever and use the techniques that I showed you in order to produce a higher quality video. Remember to subscribe, hit that like button. This would help me out tremendously. Until next time, take care and enjoy your holidays.